Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss geeks for geeks problem of the day and today's problem is permutations of a given string and it is a medium level problem. So again, like uh, this is a very standard problem and you must have already seen this problem before and you can also see the number of summations are pretty huge. That means they have just reused a previous problem. So anyways, if you haven't solved this problem before, then it will be very helpful to you because it will, this problem will essentially help you to grab some knowledge of recursion and backtracking and that can be really helpful in some cases whenever you are solving standard problems. So the question is we have been given a string s and we have to print all unique permutations of given string in lexicographically sorted order. So there are actually two parts to this particular problem. The first part is printing all the permutations. Right. Printing all the permutation means that if there are six characters then there will be six factorial permutations. Right, so this is the first part. Now the second part is that the permutations should be unique and they should be in lexicographically sorted order. By unique we mean, for example, if there are six characters, we know that the number of permutations are six factorial. But what if two of them are repeating? So in this case, the number of like uh, permutations becomes six factorial divided by two. Right, this is the simple permutations that we have studied earlier. So that is why like we have to print only unique of them and they should be obviously in sorted order. So we'll discuss how we can solve this problem and then uh, we'll discuss this particular part separately because this second part is just an extension of the first part. So uh, let us discuss how we can form a permutation. I'm going to give you a very general idea of uh, how you can generally solve these permutation problems with backtracking. So for example, if you have been given a uh, string ABC or let us uh, assume any general permutation. So let us assume that you are at the first place. Right. So you decided that you want to fix A. Right. So you have one path where you fixed A. Right. And the remaining two places are empty. Right. Now at this particular position, you are at the second position in this state and you decide that you want to fix B. So you go to this part. Here you will have A and B and one space empty. Now since there are no other way, you can only go to a, B, C. This is the only way you have. Right. So how do I? I have found one permutation. I have tried to fix the first characters. Now how do I backtrack? Right. Now once I fix this, I will go to the upward position. I will remove the last character. Remember I am saying remove the last character. Right. So now I will only have A and B. Since there are no other ways to which I can go from this particular place, then I will again backtrack. Right. So B will be removed. So when I come to this particular position, now my second choice is to have C, right? So remember if I have taken A and the original string was A, B, C. So I have already taken A. So this cannot be taken again. Now I have B and C. I tried taking B at this particular position, but I haven't tried taking C at this particular position. So what I'll do is I try taking C. And this place is empty, right? Again, I have no other choice than to go to A, C and B, right? I found my second permutation, right? Now I again backtrack, there is no other place I can go from AC, so I again backtrack. So at this particular position, you see, I have taken A, I have taken B, I have taken C, so I have no other choice, right? So I again backtrack to this parent position. Now at this parent position, I have all the characters empty, right? All of the three are empty. At this particular position, I have tried taking A, but I have not tried taking B and C. So I will try taking B first. Now I again have two positions empty, right? So again at this particular position, since I have taken B now, you will see that if A, B and C were the characters that I had, now I have taken B. Now I have not taken the first character. Till now what was happening was, we were taking characters only from the starting and the remaining characters were all that we had. But in this particular case, we have taken the second character first. So now we need to take the first character, right? So the point I am trying to convey is that you might have a case where you have several characters like this and you might have taken some character from between. So each time you want to decide on the next character that you want to take, you will have to traverse the whole list, right? This is what I'm trying to say. So when you start traversing the whole list in this particular case, you have taken B, the next character is A. So you take A, right? So let us say that you take A. So we have B, then A, and then one space empty. So now you have no other choice than to take C. So this is the next permutation. Now you backtrack. No other choice from here. Again backtrack. There is one still one choice from here. 
Now in this particular case, this was the state, right? Now you have taken B at the first position, you cannot take it again. You have already tried taking A, you have discovered all the permutations. So next option is to try taking C. So from here, you can take B and then C and then one space empty. Then you go to the next step, then you have B, C and A. This is the next permutation, right? Similarly, for this particular path, I'll do the same thing, right? Exact similar thing, it's just that C will be taken first. So I have used multiple keywords here. That is, I will backtrack or I will remove the last character or I'll like check which of the characters I have not taken here, right? These are the several things that I've discussed. Now, how do we actually do this or how do we actually implement this, right? So it's not very difficult. The first keyword that I used was backtrack, right? Backtrack is nothing, it's just a fancy keyword. If you make, for example, if you are at this particular position, you make a recursive call to the same function, right? At some point of time, at some point of time, if you have implemented your recursion correctly with a base case, right? If there are no base case, recursion will go on indefinitely. If there is a base case, at some point of time, this recursion call, this, this, this particular function call will be completely executed and the control will get back to the original caller function, right? And this will be true for every function, right? Every recursive call. So, this particular uh, point is known as backtracking, going, going back to the previous state. Now, when you come back to the previous state, for example, let us consider this particular case. So, what is the state, current state here? I had three characters. I have taken B. I cannot take it again, obviously. So, I start traversing from the first position. Now, what I do? I want to take A. So, let us have a string. Let us have a string. Let us say we have a current string and we take A. Right. So we have taken A. Now we need some sort of mechanism to store that this is the character that I have taken and I cannot take it again. Right. So let us have a visited array and let's say I have taken A. So right now I am writing it as A but uh, we need to talk about more in terms of indexing because there can be several A's. Right. There can be an A like this as well. So we have to talk about more in terms of indexing. So let us say this is the visited A and I mark it as visited. Then I'll call the traverse function or whatever function you have or the backtracking function or your helper function, you can call it anything, right? So what is happening here? I had the string B. I tried to traverse the whole string. I found that A was not taken yet. So I take A. That is why I push back into my current string. So my current string becomes PA. I set my A as visited. Why? Because now I want to show that this particular string has been visited and I cannot take it further, right? So my current string becomes BA and I call the traverse function to just go on to the next uh, character, right? So I figured out the first two characters. Now I want to figure out this last character. So what happens when I get back to this particular position after calling the function? After this function call has been executed, I'll get to the next line and this is called backtracking, right? When I got to, when I, when my control gets back to this particular function, what I need to do now? We have already discussed, we tried fixing A. Now we have to try fixing C. Right. So we will first of all, first of all, we will remove this particular character from my current string. Why? Because if my current string was B and I tried to like push back C in after it, this is not a valid case. And this is a permutation that we have already discovered. So the first step, the first step is to remove A so that my current string becomes B. So basically I'll have to do something. Let's say I'll do pop back. Right. So this. So I'll remove the last character from my string. Now, since I've removed that particular character, I also have to set it as not visited. Since I've removed that character and that particular character is no longer in my string, I have to set it as not visited, right? Right. So once you are done with all of this, my traverse function is automatically going to take care of all the things. So till now we have removed A, right? We first of all, like uh, appended A and then discovered all the paths. And then we have removed A. So now our next task is to traverse through all the other characters. I have, I have tried A. I cannot take B. So I move into the next position that is C. So now I do the same thing. Instead of appending A and marking A as visited, I will append C and mark C as visited and again call the traverse function. Right. So my traverse function is automatically going to take care of all the things. Why? Because this is going to get implemented in the same way for every position. Currently, I was doing it for the second position, but it will automatically get implemented for all the remaining positions. This is the power of recursion, right? 
we divide the problem into smaller sub problems and then it gets taken care of automatically so to visit all the other characters other than a as well what we'll have to do is we'll have to make a loop starting from 0 till the size of string and instead of a here we'll have s of i right we will append s of i we will mark i as visited the index visited right so that our code becomes more modular this is how you can solve this particular problem now the second part is we have discussed how we can form permutations the second part is we want to make sure two things that they are unique and they are sorted right so first let us discuss sorted so there are actually like multiple ways of making these two conditions satisfied but you will observe one thing you will observe one thing that if the characters or the string was initially sorted so you will see that since we are traversing from one end starting to from left to right character a will always be traversed before character b right so we will have all the strings starting with a with before all the strings starting with b similarly among a all the strings starting with b will come before all the strings starting with c right so this way if the original string is sorted then the permutations will automatically become sorted if we don't have to do anything for it right what about unique so for this for example if you have multiple string like this a b b a b b right so what you can just do is you can just traverse to the final answer vector and you can just take one of them if they are like if multiple of them are same you can just take one of them right so this is something you can do now an alternate approach to this is instead of storing it in an answer vector we create an answer set right we create an answer set and instead of pushing back the values into my answer vector i push back into my answer set so all both of the conditions will get satisfied automatically and there will be not a very huge difference in the complexity so it is completely okay to use a set right so let me just show you the code for this particular problem now what i have done i have created a set of four answers right i will be using the second approach which is i just maintain a set and it is easier to like maintain all the elements and unique and sorted order so i create a, a like a n variable n which is the size of the string and i create a visited vector now this is my traverse function we'll discuss it later on but let us see what we have here so i call the traverse function starting from position 0 and i have not taken any characters till now so i have i pass an empty string now at the end let me just show you this part i create a vector which is to return so i am going to return this particular vector to my uh, main function and i just traverse the set and i push back all the values into my to return vector and i just return to return so once i have all the values in my answer set i'll, I'll be able to fill all those values into my to return vector so let us see how does this answer set gets filled so once i call this function at position 0 first of all whenever i get inside this function i have a base case when i am at p is equals to n p is equals to n means that i have tried taking all the characters and my current string has a size of n so once i have pushed back it i return directly from here otherwise what i do is i just try traversing through all the characters one by one if that if that particular character is not visited i mark it as visited i push back that particular character into my current string and i call the traverse function so so I have uh, like divided the problem into smaller problem. I fix one character and I just move, move back like one position further. So that the remaining string that I have to traverse is one position less. So I go to P plus one and I pass my current uh, string. Since now I have like come back to this particular position, I need to remove this character from my current string. So I just pop back it and I just mark my visitor of I as zero, right? So once this is done, my further characters will get visited because of this particular loop. I have tried taking one character, then I move on to the next character and so on. So this way I will be able to visit all the characters. And let me just submit and show it to you that this works. So you see that it passes all the test cases and this solution is absolutely correct. And do drop a like and share your thoughts in the comments what you felt about the problem or any general thing you would like to share. Because your engagement with this particular video really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach more and more of people like you who want to keep solving new problems. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. It's always free of cost. And you can always unsubscribe if you don't find the videos interesting later. So till the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe. Bye-bye.